Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you've been well. I'm here ooh, in front of the Tundra. It's got a bunch of foam insulation. Got to unload that. Eventually that's going to go on the exterior of that foundation wall. But I figured this, I'm wrapping up my, my first full week of actually being on site working. So it's Friday. I've been working basically an eight to five full-time construction job this week. So figured I'd give you an informal update slash kind of intro to the build. And I'm gonna do another video following this one, which is really gonna be a more conceptual video. What went into the thought process for me buying my property because I'm turning this into more of like a homestead. I wanna be more self-sufficient. So what went into finding the property, I'm on 15 acres, but I'll talk more about that in that future video. How I designed the house, because there's, I designed this myself, uh, and I did it with a lot of design inspirations. And I'll talk about crap like insulation, but also orientation to the sun, direction, all that kind of stuff. I did a lot of I did a lot of research. I did a lot of YouTubing, honestly. Did a lot of research in that. So I'll kind of break that down in that video. But this video, I just kind of wanted to give you an update uh, on things. So I'll just turn the camera around here. So obviously, this project's been a long time in the making. I've had this hole dug for six months or so. I bought this property a year and a half or so ago and it has just been stalled delay after delay after delay. I probably won't get too into that, uh, but been a super frustrating experience, honestly. And just within the last month and a half, we've got foundation out, uh, finished off the excavation, got the footers poured, foundation, and really today was the first full day of framing. So I'm gonna be out here physically building this house for the next handful of months, honestly. And I'm not gonna do everything. Like I didn't do the concrete work. Uh, I'm not gonna do most of the plumbing. I'm not gonna do the roofing, but I'm gonna do pretty much everything else. We're gonna frame it. We're gonna sheathe it, side it, put the windows in. I'll do all the interior finish, cabinetry, everything, installing fixtures, all that stuff. I have a roofer that's gonna come and do the metal roofing once we have that all sheathed. But I will be doing most of the work Myself with the help of one other guy, Jim. Maybe you'll meet him later in the series. And Skyler, another guy is gonna be helping, at least for the framing portion. So basically three guys are gonna frame this whole thing and Skyler maybe, but Jim and I will finish off much of the rest. So again, I think I'll talk more details. Like the intro to this whole build homestead series, I'm gonna make a series out of it with updates comment on this video and i'm gonna say in the next video too what you want to see what kind of details you're interested in what i should film what i shouldn't film i kind of want to set up a time lapse camera to take like one or two pictures a day for the next handful of months until it's done but i need to research what cameras out there i can just set and forget and it'll do its thing for for many months so if you have any thoughts on that let me know down below so yeah framing this is the walkout basement so this slopes down 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 to my little stream down there and then this is really the back of the house i'll have a deck walkout basement like i just said and the main floor from the front will look more like a ranch i'll kind of show you drawings and stuff in the next video i'm sure but we're getting stuff dropped off now obviously uh with any good construction project i'm gonna make tons of trips down to Home Depot or whatever to get stuff in here. So I'll probably be doing an update on the Tundra because now that I have it for five months or so. Again, luckily my father-in-law owns a little excavation company. Did I say it? I don't know if I did, but he and his son, my brother-in-law, have done all the excavation here. I help out a little bit. I, I, I know barely how to run the equipment, so I kind of do the dumb easy digging stuff and they do the finesse stuff and I'll run around with a shovel and stuff. So we're gonna waterproof the foundation wall here this weekend probably, probably gonna be working seven days a week, some, some weekends here, install the French drain, all that kind of good stuff, get this backfilled and then you'll only see this will be basically the front of the house. But I wanna show you some things like my shipping container. Oh, and then actually over here real quick. So this will be the front of my house. So again, 
all of this is gonna grade is gonna come up to about where you see the foundation and this will look like a just a one-story ranch from the front so over here will be my front door here is a garage this is just an oversized three-car garage and then actually the driver will come down here and go off that way or this way this way into the house that way into my future LLOD headquarters shop garage thing that'll be a separate building over there so that's what we got going on so far and then this is where I spend a little bit of time as well so I got a couple shipping containers here. Here's one I'm renting. It's a standard size shipping container, 40 foot, eight foot tall. This is one I bought. It's a high cube. So it's a nine foot six tall and 40 feet long as well. So, so in here I'm planning to set up like a whole bench probably on, on this wall, actually a lev rack. So a work table, a bunch of storage, kind of like gear locker type storage. I don't have that yet. I'll be getting it soon, but once I do get it, I'll show you guys. But in here, I obviously got some snackies and a Dometic, so it's all powered by this right here. So this is an EcoFlow Delta Pro. So EcoFlow, you've seen me use their products in the past. I actually got their Delta, their original Delta 1300 uh, from back in the Kickstarter days when that one launched. This is their kind of newest, latest, and greatest. I'll pull it out here in a little bit. My microwave's on top, but this is basically I have a Dometic, I think it's a 75 dual zone over here. So it has a fridge and a freezer hooked up to it. So we got fridge there, snacks, drinks, freezer. I actually just went to Costco. I hadn't had a corn dog in so long and I was like, oh, corn dogs. So this is kind of my lunch <laughs> snack station and eventually will kind of be workbench. I'll have the house plans and everything set up. Here's a sneak peek, I guess. You can kind of see some of the house design there. Sweet, I'll show you more on that later. But this thing has a cable that's running to the roof that is hooked up to a solar panel. So I have no power on site now, partially because I was a slacker and I still need to talk to the power company and get all that design hooked up and run and get a temp pole installed and everything. But partially, I kind of wanted to see if I could build a house with only this and nothing else. So obviously there's some tools that are battery charged and some that are plugged in, but this is basically gonna act as a charging station slash run the compressors and run anything else that needs to plug into AC power. So this thing, I'll kind of dive into some specs here, but I just think it's cool and I think you guys will think it's cool and it's kind of a cool use case for me because, you know, I'm a nerd and this is kind of a prepper slash survival slash tech item, but I am using it in a real world scenario of single-handedly using that to power the entire build with a 400 watt EcoFlow panel on the roof. Just honestly, just because I, I wanted to. They did send me this, but I'm, I'm working with them on some other stuff. They have some products coming out I can't talk about yet, but are very, very cool. And this product is actually probably the coolest battery overall that I've come across, not just in spec wise, but kind of how you can use it. So let me, let me pull this off. Actually, let me hop on the roof here and show you the solar panel. So right behind the Dometic, uh, the solar panel folds up, basically folds four ways. This is the carrying case that you can drop it in. And right now I have it up on the roof. So let me climb up there. So here we are up on top of the shipping container. I actually used my old ladder that came on my Jayco. Climbed up here and here we have the 400 watt solar panel. If anyone was wondering, the top of these, I don't know if you can tell, they're not super stable, nor are the walls. So I know a lot of people want me to bury one of these on my property. Maybe I will, probably won't tell you about it if I do but probably I won't. But right up here is 400 watts of beautiful solar power. There's no trees around or anything like that to block it. So this is essentially getting sun all day long. Yeah, if I angled it or whatever, it'd be a little more efficient, but single 400 watt panel. I can actually hook up to 1600 watts. So I could put four of these panels. I actually have two of them. So I may bring another one and slap 800 watts up here, but I'm kind of, it's, 
It's relatively heavy and robust, but I kind of have these magnet things in here. And we've had some crazy weather and even some hail and no worries so far. But this comes out into standard MC4 connection, has the EcoFlow adapter here, and is probably not, it's honestly probably not meant to just live out here full time. But I'm just gonna kind of test it out, see how it goes, and see if basically I can power my entire job site, at least for a while. Maybe once I get power hooked up, it may be more convenient, but see if I can power the whole build off of this baby alone. So basically, I run this down into the EcoFlow down there, and let me hop down and show you some more. But yeah, you can use these with any panel, but that is EcoFlow's biggest panel, uh, and they make a couple smaller ones, and then you can use them with whatever brand panels that you want, with whatever adapter you need to, but they'll come natively with an MC4 connection, which is pretty much the most common standard in solar panels these days. All right, so let's check this beast out. It's already back up to 100%. So on the front here, we have a panel. It does have, I haven't taken off any of these stickers, an app you can download and change settings and monitor stuff. I haven't even done that. Uh, full disclosure, I just kind of use it just as is. So a bunch of USBs, USB-Cs here, has AC output, obviously. Uh, this one can output up to 3,600 watts. Also have a, a 30 amp plug, so you can just straight up power like an RV or something, or if you have some higher draw equipment that needs this kind of plug, you can use that. Uh, and then I've been running a 200 foot extension cable, one of the heavy duty ones, it was like a $300 extension cable over to the job site. And we just drop that in and power everything off of that. So this is primarily what I've been using. And then on the side here, we have a few other ports that kind of has this fun little cover panel that you can use if you have things like plugged in long-term, but this one doesn't fit. This one is powering my Dometic fridge. It's got Anderson out and little remote controls and a bunch of little stuff down here. Honestly, this, this thing is way too feature packed. Uh, it feels like I've already been talking about it for a while and I've only just scratched the surface. I'll link to this down below. I may have a coupon code actually with them as well, but you can find more down below. I'm just kind of giving you the basics. Back here, EcoFlow's kind of early claim to fame and still uh, kind of they're the king of super fast charging. And you don't need some crazy power brick or anything. All you need is that, which is super nice. So that's it. And that's like a standard. That's what plugs into the back of any tower PC or pretty much any kind of robust device. Everything else is internal and it charges crazy fast. And the thing, I may use this thing for longer term because you can hook this up to your house and basically use it as a whole home backup. Now this unit itself, you can use it like that, but the neat thing is it's expandable. So you can add more basically dedicated battery cells to it and you can actually couple two of these to get double the power and each of those can get hooked up to a battery cell. And they sell a smart generator that basically detects that this thing is getting low on power and kicks on the generator and it's a DC generator so it super efficiently recharges the battery so you can just keep this thing up and running whatever devices that you need to. So it's, it's cool. This handle pulls out, you can use the wheels to roll it around. So I, I would say if you're looking for like a massive, huge power system, now this thing's big, like it's, you can't really tell the scale, but I don't, have any, I don't have anything good around for scale, but there's a standard 12 ounce drive nitro coffee can on top. But yeah, I've been talking for a while on it. They have a really good website. I mean, they didn't tell me to say any of this stuff, but I was, I was like, oh, I'm gonna try and explain it real quick in like five minutes and tell you everything you need to know about it, but that's impossible. So maybe I'll do a dedicated review on, on it as I use more of it. But my usage here is like such a small part of how it can be used, but I just wanted it because, again, it can handle 3,600 watts, so it'll power anything that you can power off of a normal, like a normal household outlet, like a 20 amp outlet, I mean, more than that even. 
So I just wanted it and I wanted to just permanently have solar up on the roof. So I never had to think of it. I just plug things in when I need to work and unplug when I don't. And also wanted a fridge in here, kind of a home base snack station, as you can see, and a microwave and a toaster and all kinds of goodies that I'm eventually going to set up a little nicer than this. But yeah, the, the thing that I may use it for in the future is you can use it for a whole house backup here. And they actually sell this like little solar panel stand that is like a sun tracker, which is cool. I don't have one of those. But basically, I may use this unit, combo it, pair it up, add the extra batteries, add the smart generator, hook it to solar, maybe hook it to like wind power in the future, and use this basically as a Tesla power wall. Like I have a Tesla power wall currently in my house, but this is much more flexible usage than a Tesla power wall. So anyway, that's why I'm kind of excited about this kind of technology, just because of what companies are doing uh, currently, kind of they're pushing, they're being more innovative, pushing things forward. And for the whole homestead build, obviously, this thing is on its own well, on its own septic, and it's going to be connected to the grid just because I have to. But if I can get enough solar and enough battery power, then I'll just be feeding the grid. But if power goes out or if the grid goes down or whatever, then I can operate my house just like normal. So anyway, that's cool. And I don't know, I, I nerd out on this stuff, obviously. So I just kind of wanted to show you it. And <laughs> I thought this would be a shorter segment on it. But you know how I do. I like to talk. Anyway, let's go back out here to the property. Really just wanted to let you know, I know there's been a lot of radio silence on the build just because there's been a lot going on behind the scenes, working with the county, all that crap. It's a nightmare. Biggest nightmare of my life so far, but it's actually finally starting to happen. Now I'm in the driver's seat. So I think this thing will take shape pretty fast and I'll be giving you guys updates along the way. So Look forward to that. Again, ask any questions. Uh, if you'd like to be involved with the build, not even necessarily like give me a discount. Or anything, if you wanna give me a discount, sweet. But if you're in the greater Denver area towards the mountains and you wanna be involved, let me know. There's actually a local guy, maybe I'll talk more about him later, that's gonna be doing some of my metal work. So he's fabbing up the staircase for me. One of the viewers works with uh, kind of a gas fireplace company. So he's hooking me up actually with, uh, he's not for, for free, but like dealer pricing on a gas fireplace. And I don't know, it'd be cool to work with other subscribers or whatever kind of in the build of this. Granted, most of my stuff is already taken care of. I actually ordered windows through a subscriber, though I think those were those were full price I paid for that, but he helped me get the order through. So it was a subscriber that reached out, um, worked at a local uh, window supplier company. So he helped me with my order there. But I don't know, I think that's cool. So if you have anything, sorry, this is kind of boring. I don't know if you'd rather look at my face or, or this. We'll do face for a bit. So again not not looking for a discount or anything but discounts would be cool because i'm way over budget but that's the house and super excited and i want to really kind of just talk nerdy about things so some of these videos aren't going to appeal to everyone i know that but i'm doing a lot of stuff to basically have a super energy efficient home that's going to be comfortable and it's going to be my home base for myself and my family for the next i don't know hopefully a couple decades. So the whole homestead aspect of it, I'll be getting into once we live here. I tried with my failed orchard where I only have one tree alive because it was all, all the roots were uh, devastated by moles or shrews or whatever. If you are an exterminator in the area and want to kill all my moles and voles, hit me up. But yeah, basically tomorrow, waterproofing this wall, then I'm going to insulate that wall with that foam uh, insulation. And I'm like super, super nerdy about it. So I probably won't get too nerdy into insulation and thermal mass and all this other stuff. But then French drain, then backfill, continuing to work on framing out here. Got to put the floor joists in. So I don't know, I'll just give you a quick, like a quick, quick walk around. This is framed. These are triple 
uh, nine and something LVLs, basically like giant thick sheets of heavy duty plywood, really, honestly. This is actually gonna be a window, not a door, but we're gonna do that bottom part later. So here are gonna be two bedrooms, nice sized bedrooms. Probably one's a guest room. Isabella may wanna move down into one of the other ones in her teenage years. Upstairs above us, we'll have the master bedroom, uh, master bedroom, bathroom area, a bedroom, a bedroom, and then the rest is living room area. So it's gonna be a pretty big house. I mean, by my standards anyway, I don't come from wealth or anything like that. So it's gonna be a really big house by my standards, five bedrooms. I will have back here kind of my office gear type room in the back, bathroom, a little mechanical room. I'm gonna run radiant floors, so PEX tubing in the floors for radiant heat. The slab's gonna be insulated, obviously massive. This thing is crazy engineered, like uh, my concrete contractor and then my father-in-law who's an excavator was like, this thing's like a, engineered like a commercial building. So I have a giant like runway landing of a footer. I have number seven rebar spec in this wall. And actually my foundation guy had number eight from a previous like commercial job that he had extra of. So I actually have number eight rebar, which if you don't know, is just massively, massively thick, like commercial rebar up in here. So this will survive a, a nuke basically. And then I'm gonna have a big kind of great room through here, which I don't know what I'm gonna do. Probably a little workout area, pool table, who knows? Back here is another mechanical room. That's kind of the main mechanical. That's where I'm gonna get super nerdy with water filtration and all kinds of other stuff. Out here, this is a 16 foot span, but I'm too poor to have like a cool 16 foot span door. So these are actually gonna be two eight foot patio doors. So it'll be like the poor man's version of the, <laughs> the 18 foot or the 16 foot span. Uh, if anyone wants to donate me a 16 foot accordion door, I'll gladly take it off your shoulders. But this is the basement walkout out here to my backyard, which uh, it's kind of hard to tell on camera. Drops down probably, I don't know that, I should know how far it is down to there. Probably 60 feet total elevation drop down there and then goes back up there and I own that back there. Well, kind of this area back there as well and then own a good chunk of land out that way. And we leveled the back just to kind of backfill it. That's what we were working on earlier this week uh, excavation wise, I was running that whacker, which is just a, a radio controlled car basically to compact a lot of this dirt. And then here, now that I'm back here, it's kind of like a really nice backyard. So we may leave it something like this. I need to order, no joke, probably a thousand cubic yards of dirt to just bring all my stuff up to grade. That is an, an, one of the many unexpected costs that I've come around. These are for the main floor will have a deck. So this again is basement, walkout basement level. Main floor will have a deck with the same kind of back view, which will be cool. And then the front porch that's facing south. I'll get more into that in my nerdy kind of layout planning video. That will be south facing and we'll have kind of front porch and stuff out there. Over there is garage, over there is future shop, YouTube headquarter, parking for all the rigs. So that's kind of a quick, a quick demo. It is two by six framing, just kind of, it's pretty standard stuff. I'm going to do a layer of spray foam and then a layer of bat insulation. I'm not sure what I'm gonna use for that, maybe rock wool. Uh, and then I have zip R sheathing on the outside, which is basically standard sheathing, exterior sheathing that has some interesting kind of weatherproofing properties with a section of insulation glued to it. And that'll provide super, super good insulation here. Again, I may talk more about that when I get nerdy, but yeah, this is it. And then, It'll have floor 
engineered floor trusses here. So webbed kind of two by four, you know, two by four webbed trusses running that. So it'll be super easy to run HVAC, plumbing, electrical, everything through here. And one of the main reasons I did that was because I want this whole area open. So there's not going to be any beams. There's not going to be any HVAC dust. There's not going to be any poles going to the ground. It's just going to be open, which you pretty much need pre-engineered trusses to do that. Same with the roof, single sloped pre-engineered trusses on top of that. So yeah, I don't know if you cared about that. Also, since this is my job site, I'm the general contractor here. I'm the boss man. <laughs> I brought a little tent out. I got tables just kind of set up here. We're kind of off the, off the beaten path a bit. So I'm not too worried about some of these lower dollar items getting stolen. And I actually currently share a driveway with my neighbor. So they're kind of keep an eye on things, got some alerts. I actually have uh, some cameras set up for security, but I'm, I probably I want to add more just because I kind of nerd out on, on that stuff. Since I have power there now, I can do more stuff. Maybe I'll get a Starlink. Maybe I'll just get a, a 5G hotspot or something and just kind of do more just because I also want to be able to check on a camera what the property is looking like. You know, if it's raining or something, maybe I'll delay coming out for a bit. But if you're interested in this stuff, watching the build progress, hearing about details, maybe learning a thing or two, I don't know. I definitely don't want this to come off like I know everything. I've done literally thousands and thousands of hours of research at this point. So I do know quite a bit, but I have no background in construction. I literally, I, well, I have a tiny bit. I work construction just as a framing monkey for a couple summers in college. And that's about, that's about it. But I don't know much about anything. I've never been a general contractor, nothing like that. I've done, I've built a couple homes again as a framer and I've done a lot of my own house remodels and stuff. So I don't want this to come off like, I am a pro and I know everything, but some stuff that I've learned, I'll, I'll tell you guys about it. And obviously you can take it and take it to a general contractor, or I'm really scared, honestly, because again, I've been watching a lot of videos, construction videos, plumbing videos, electric, electrician videos, like all kinds of videos about building science and this and that. And one thing that it seems like is that the industry is very toxic in that everyone has their own opinion. And there's a million different ways to do everything. There, there's, you, t you bring 10 different framing crews in to frame this house, they would all do it different. Different order, different bracing, different operations, different methods. Uh, and so that's the thing I'm worried about. Me, clearly no construction background, showing myself build a house. I just feel like there's gonna be a lot of toxicity. Toxic, toxicity. But. I don't care, there's toxicity everywhere. But as I'm getting into a new industry, I guess, even though it's kind of temporary, I think I'm gonna face some of that, but it's cool. So if you wanna be positive, be positive. If you wanna be negative, well, I feel sorry for you because you must have a depressing life. But cool, it's getting dark now, so I think I'm gonna wrap it up. I still need to unload all of this insulation and get back to my family because now I'm basically working a new, a brand new full-time job as of this week on top of everything else I've been doing. So pray for me, guys. Pray for me. But I'm super excited about the build. It's finally taking shape. I'm going to be very exhausted and overworked for the next handful of months. And then baby's coming in January. So triple pray for me. But they say if I can make it through this, I can make it through anything. So feeling good feeling real good again comment down below like if there's specific things you want to see if you have i'm i'm super open to recommendations about everything i've done again i've done thousands of hours of research and i'm pretty dialed into what i'm doing but like i also said i'm not a pro so if you have recommendations or anything feel free to chime in down below and then this series, the Homestead series, is gonna, it's gonna be a lot of house building up front and then gonna eventually evolve to more stuff that 
we may do on the channel. We may move to Ashley's channel. I don't know, you know, chickens and goats and farming and whatnot. Cool. All right, guys, I'm exhausted. It's been the first week that I've been back to like a manual labor job during the day and then all my YouTube and everything else at night. So it's tough. It's tough. Okay. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Take care.